Hello, this is Demon coming back for another recording session for Mass Effect 1. So, um, so we're, we're gonna be starting off off. Off off, Jesus. You can tell I'm fucking tired. Um, well, not tired, but I've been playing too long in recording. Um, so basically, I'm still continuing on from where I left off last time. I just ended the recording session, so. I think this, I don't know what episode this might be. Again, I don't know if I'm going to cut the episodes up or not. I haven't decided yet. Um, I said I'd just try to like record one whole mission post, record one whole mission post, but I had to see how long the recordings were still. So we're basically going to be starting uh, pretty much off from doing Ferris, but first, as always, run around, talk to everybody first, and then we'll begin the mission. Uh, I prefer gold to silver, you know, for my metal. I figured you'd recommend me for one since I uh, pulled your boots out of the fire. If we present you with a medal, you'll end up sitting on stage listening to politicians make speeches for a couple of hours. That's a good point. They'd probably make me shave, too. I spent the last seven weeks working on this baby. No medal's worth that. So, Commander, why don't you tell me why you're really here? How's the Normandy performing? Is yeah, she everything they question. said she'd be? She's the best ship in the fleet. If you've got a pilot who knows how to handle her. Balance isn't what you'd expect. Takes a while to get used to that oversized drive core we got stuffed in the back, and her power can sneak up on you if you're not careful. The Normandy's probably too much ship for your average Alliance pilot, Commander. Lucky for you, yeah. I'm anything but average. I guess I can let Joker talk. I like to know my crew. That way people Mind don't, don't just have questions? to fall off what I say. <laughs> I can see where this is going. You did a background check on me, didn't you? Well, I'll tell you the same thing I told the captain. You want me as your pilot. I'm not good. I'm not even great. I am the best damn helmsman in the Alliance fleet. Top of my class in flight school, I earned that. All those commendations in my file, I earned every single one. Those weren't given to me as charity for my disease. I'm sorry, Joker. I didn't even know you were sick. You mean... You mean you didn't know? Oh, crap. Okay, I've got Vrolich syndrome. Brittle bone disease. The bones in my legs never develop properly. They're basically hollow, too much force, and they'll shatter. Even with crutches and my leg braces, it's hard to get around. One wrong step and crack! It's very dramatic. But I've learned to manage my condition, Commander. Put the Normandy in my hands and I'll make her dance for you. Just don't ask me to get up and dance unless, you know, you like the sound of snapping shin bones. I have to go. Alright, see ya. Yeah, I could have him talk more, but I forget about it. I just want to... I, I like giving that out because when we play Mass Effect 2, there's a certain part where that kind of explains why he walks a certain way, so I just had to let that go. Um, as I was saying, um, we're going to go through talk with everybody inside the ship. Once we do that, we're going to go ahead and get ready for completing the next mission. We're going to run over to Pharaoh's colony and try to save it as best we can. Um, I don't know how it's going to work out though. There's um, Pharaoh's colony has a bit of, of a bit of a problem. Before I talk to Caden, um, there's a certain part of it where you have to use a certain weapon to save everybody, and there's a chance, very small, minute, that somebody could die. If it's not somebody who I know is an essential part of the colony, then I probably won't reset it. If I happen to get somebody killed that's important, I will probably reset from where I'm at. I'll leave a save point so I can go back and keep trying to save them. Otherwise, I don't want to deal with it because it will be a hell of a problem to deal with. Because if somebody dies, I think Pharos doesn't do as well, and there's a chance it could just die. Commander, do you have a minute? I always make time for my officers. Off the record, I think there's something wrong here. This Saren is looking for records on some kind of galactic extinction, but we can't get back up from the council? Sorry, Commander. There's writing on the wall here, but someone isn't reading it. The Council doesn't want to believe anything's wrong. I'd call it human nature, but... I hear you. It, it just seems like a group that's been around as long as the Council should see this coming. And it's funny, we finally get out here and the final frontier was already settled. And the residents don't even seem impressed by the view. Or the dangers. Well, well. You're a romantic. Did you sign on for the dream, Alenko? Secure a man's future in space? Yeah, I, re I read a lot of those books when I was a kid where the hero goes to space to prove himself worthy of a woman he loves or, you know, for justice. Now, maybe I was a romantic in the beginning, but I thought about it after brain camp. Uh, sorry. Biotic acclimation and temperance training. I'm not looking for the dream. 
I just want to do some good. See what's out here. Sorry if I got too informal. Protocol wasn't a big focus back in Bot. Tell me about it. Biotic acclimation and temperance didn't last past the airlock. To the kids they hauled in, it was brain camp. Sorry, hauled in is unkind. We were encouraged to commit to an evaluation of our abilities so an understanding of biotics could be compiled. There are worse results of accidental exposure to element zero in the womb. Leads to brain tumors some kids grew up with. Is there some question about how you were exposed? My mother was downwind of a transport crash. It was before there were human biotics, a little after the discovery of the Martian ruins. It only gets iffy around 63 when Kinetics was running out of first-gen subjects. Until then, they'd relied on accidentals. A bunch of guys in suits show up at your door after school, and next thing you know, you're out on Jump Zero. Jump Zero is Gagarin Station, right? What's it like? Yeah, that's the official name. Biggest and farthest facility we had for decades. Right on the termination shock, the outer edge of the solar system. It's where they did all the goose chase FTL research before we caught on to using mass effect fields. It was a sterile research platform when I was there. There were other kids in the same boat, right? At least you weren't alone out there. That's true. We did have a little circle that'd get together every night before lights out. We didn't have much to do, though. It was a research platform then, and Kinetics kept Jump Zero off the extranet to prevent leaks. Then you must have had plenty of time to get to know each other. Yeah. We'd sit around and bowl every night after dinner, play cards or network games. There was this girl named Rana, who had a little circle grow up around her. She was from Turkey, her family was very rich, but she was smart and charming as hell. Beautiful, but not stuck up about it. Like you, I guess. Ma'am? Sounds like she was special to you. She was. Maybe she felt the same, but things never felt together. Training, you know. You know of any intentional exposures for certain? No one knows. Doesn't mean they didn't happen. As big as the exposures were, it was hard to track down accidentals. It was different then. No one knew the potential, so there wasn't a lot of regulation. Anything Kinetics did was gold. I'm not saying they intentionally detonated drives over our outposts, but in retrospect, they were damn quick on the scene. Jump Zero's a long way from home. What was it like? The Grand Gateway to Humanity looks a lot better in the vids. Anyway, this was supposed to be a casual debrief, not a bull session about stuff that happened years ago. I wanted to get to know you a little better, that's all. Thanks for the talk, Caden. Well. You're welcome, man. You, uh, make a habit of getting this personal with everyone? Again, going for the story. Got my witness. Just a story. That's why I said the scene ain't gonna be in there. I just don't like it. It's just a matter of... It's either... It's gonna come up, and I know it is. No. Screw you if you say it. I'm just going for the story for it. No, no I don't. We'll talk again later. I'll, uh, I'll I know how YouTube comments are. God is my witness, but, I get a few. Yeah, I'd like that. Although I don't think I'm going to be playing Mass Effect 1 again in the future, so I doubt that's going to come up. Commander, are you coming to check up on me? You look much better. How are you feeling? Dr. Chakwas assures me I am going to be fine. I was impressed with her knowledge of Asari physiology. You're in good hands. Dr. Chakwas knows what she's doing. I never properly thanked you for saving me from the Geth, Commander. If you hadn't shown up, I... I'm just glad we got there in time. So am I. I know you took a chance bringing me aboard this ship. I have seen the way your crew looks at me. They do not trust me. But I am not like Benezia. I will do whatever I can to help you stop Saren. I promise. Don't worry, Liara. I trust you. I know you won't let me down. It means a lot to hear you say that, Commander. 
Thank you. Tell me about yourself, Liara. Me? I am afraid I am not very interesting, Commander. I spend most of my time on remote digs, unearthing mundane items buried in long-forgotten Prothean ruins. Sounds dangerous. And lonely. Sometimes I would run afoul of indigenous life forms or stumble across a small band of mercenaries or privateers. But I was always careful. Until the Geth followed me to Artemis Tau. I never found myself in any situation my biotics could not handle. As for the solitude, well, that is one aspect that most appealed to me. Sometimes I just need to get away from other people. You don't like other people? I suppose it comes from being a matriarch's daughter. People expected me to follow in Benezia's footsteps. They wanted me to become a leader of our people. Matriarchs guide their followers into the future. They seek the truth of what is yet to come. Maybe that's why I became so interested in the secrets of the past. It sounds so foolish when I say it out loud. It sounds like I became an archaeologist simply to spite Benezia. All children rebel against their parents. It's a natural part of growing up. Uh -huh. You share the wisdom of the matriarch, Shepard. That is exactly what Benezia said when I told her of my decision. But there was more to it than that. I felt drawn to the past. The Protheans were these wondrous, mysterious figures. I wanted to know everything about them. That is why I find you so fascinating. You were marked by the beacon on Eden Prime. You were touched by working Prothean technology. Sounds like you want to dissect me in a lab somewhere. What? No! I did not mean to insinuate... Uh, I never meant to offend you, Shepard. I only meant that you would be an interesting specimen for an in-depth study. Uh, no, that's even worse. <laughs> Calm down, Liara. I was only joking. Joking? Oh, by the goddess! How could I be so dense? You must think I am a complete and utter fool. Now you know why I prefer to spend my time in the field with data disks and computers. I always seem to say something embarrassing around other people. Please, just pretend this conversation never happened. I don't think I want to do Benezia or Sorry Culture. I'm not, not too involved to make it too long. Stuff I should people go. can figure out on their own. Goodbye, Shepard. Again, I'm doing the Let's Play to enjoy the game, but same time, I don't really want to spend too much time going through the process of just um, having them talk the whole time. Because I figure people want the game plan more, get further in the story. Because if I just keep sitting there talking to them, I could literally sit there for like five, ten minutes just talking to somebody. Now Rex should start so, giving us ready to get the missions from him. Saren on the run. It won't be long now. Saren's good, but I'm better. Good. He's rotten. To the core. I could tell as soon as I met him. Why didn't you tell me this sooner? I would have if I thought it was important. I think I'd like to hear about it just the same. This was a while ago. A bunch of mercs were bragging about a job out near the edges of the Terminus systems. They said it paid well and the boss was never around to ride them. They said he was looking for more men, too. So I checked it out. I didn't know Saren was openly recruiting mercs. It wasn't that open, and he only showed his face once. We'd been raiding ships in the area for months when we took out this massive cargo freighter. Our biggest haul yet. I was on board checking bodies for valuables, looking for some extra credits. That's when I saw him. What did Saren want with the ship? I don't know what he wanted. He was just moving through the ship, watching. A couple of the mercs called him by name, but he never spoke to them. Never spoke to anyone. I had a really bad feeling about him, so I got the hell out. Didn't even wait to get paid. Oh. What kind of cargo was the freighter carrying? What was Saren after? I don't know. 
All I saw on that ship was food and medical supplies. There were some basic weapons, but nothing big. If there was anything of value on that ship, I didn't see it. That's why I didn't mention it sooner. Alright, so I'm gonna screw with this. There was a Volus trading vessel. Big one. Lots of guards. But they were no match for us. That's the only time you saw him? Yeah. Didn't even know who he was. Still wouldn't if I hadn't joined up with you. But my instincts were right. Every other merc on that mission turned up dead within a week. Every damn one. Alright, so we don't it's have any mixed. more. Shepard. Commander? Do you have a few minutes to talk? One on one? Sure. I, I was hoping to get a minute of your time off the record. I keep an open door policy. If you have any concerns, lay them on me. All right. I, I know things are different aboard the Normandy, but uh, I'm I'm concerned about the aliens, Vicarian and Rex. With all due respect, Commander, should they have full access to the ship? They may not serve the Alliance Chief, but they're allies, at least as far as Saren goes. This is the most advanced ship in the Alliance Navy. I don't think we should give them free reign to poke around the vital systems. Engines, sensors, weapons. I've always wanted to do this your out of line theory, but it's like... I don't know, I just feel like the distrust one is probably the best one out of all of it, because that's... Usually when they give you another option over here, it's usually ones that are like 50-50. Sometimes they could be good, sometimes they're bad, it just depends. You don't trust the Alliance's allies? I'm not sure I'd call the Council races allies. We, humanity, I mean, have to learn to rely on ourselves. Standing up for ourselves doesn't mean standing alone. I don't think we should turn down allies. I just think we shouldn't bet everything on them staying allies. As noble as the council members seem now, if their backs are against the wall, they'll abandon us. You've got a pessimistic view of the universe, Williams. A pessimist is what an optimist calls a realist. Look. If you're fighting a bear, and the only way for you to survive is to sick your dog on it and run, you'll do it. As much as you love your dog, it isn't human. It's not racism, not really. Members of their species will always be more important to them than humans are. I don't know, I know a lot of people, they tried to sick their dog on it, they probably helped the dog to kill the bear. But that's just my opinion, I mean, why are you going to be out in the middle of the wilderness where there's a bear at? If you had a gun on you, you wouldn't have that problem. These seem like deeply held beliefs, Williams. What made you think this way? My family's defended the Alliance since it was founded. My father, grandfather, great-grandmother, they all picked up a rifle and swore the oath of service. I guess we just tend to think of Earth's interests as our own. It doesn't sound like you've worked with aliens before. No, ma'am. Mainly I've been groundside, part of the surface garrison forces. I did get a rotation on a space station for training. Every Marine a rifleman, every rifleman ZG certified. That's odd. Your record is spotless and your technical scores are exemplary. You should be serving with the fleet. Anyway, that's why I haven't served with many aliens, Commander. And I come from a military family, too. My parents were both Navy. Anybody in your family we might know? Couldn't say, Commander. We probably have a lot in common. You join up to carry on the tradition? No. The future of humanity is out here. There's so much we haven't seen yet. Yeah. I still remember my first field exercise on Titan. When we hit mud, the reality hit me. I'm the first person who ever stood here. Then my drill instructor kicked me in the ass. I went face first into the muck. He spent the next five minutes chewing me out for gold breaking. Don't tell me you had Gunny Ellison. <laughs> He's the only one who uses that word to describe shirking duty. Oh, Lord. You went to the Makapog boot camp, too? Yeah. Gunny Ellison's still reaming out recruits down there. Kicking ass and using words like inveigle and pusillanimous. <laughs> All right. I can see where your concerns are coming from, Williams. But this is a multilateral mission. You're going to have to work with aliens, like it or not. It won't be a problem, Commander. You say jump, I say how high. You tell me to kiss a Turian, I'll ask which cheek. 
I don't think kissing Turians will be necessary. You never know, Commander. What's your opinion of the last mission? Not sure I buy Dr. Tassoni's story about her and her mom not talking. They're family, right? I think she's being straight with us. Or at least I don't think she lies very often. Yeah, she's probably really bad at it. Hey, want me to ask her about her sex life? Might be illuminating. I don't think she's used to teasing, good-natured or otherwise. No fun, Commander. Too bad those ruins got destroyed. I mean, they lasted thousands of years. That's impressive. Dismissed, Chief. Ma'am. Commander, how are you? Oh. Why did you want to be a C-Sec officer in the first place? Hmm. That's a good question. There were several reasons, I guess. Like what? Probably the same as most officers. I wanted to fight injustice, wanted to help people. I guess my father had something to do with it, too. He was CSEC, one of the best. I grew up hearing about his accomplishments or seeing his picture on the vids after a big arrest. He's taking my resignation pretty hard. That's tough. But you'd think he'd be impressed you're going after Saren. My father's a CSEC man to the bone. Do things right or don't do them at all, he says. He thinks I'm being too rash, too impatient. He's worried I'll become just like Saren. He actually talked me out of becoming a Spectre when I was younger, for the same reasons. You were asked to be a Spectre? Well, I was targeted as a possible Spectre candidate. Me and about a thousand other Turian military recruits. I could have received special training, but my father didn't like it. He despises the Spectres. He hates the idea of someone having unlimited power with no accountability. He wouldn't like you, Commander. No offense. I suppose I can understand his concern. You can. But Saren's not going to play by our rules, c sex rules. If you want to nail Saren, you need to send someone who isn't restricted by policies and procedures. Just because you can break the rules doesn't mean you should. I don't need to stoop to Saren's level to stop him. And neither do you, Garrus. I see what you mean, but... I'll think about it. Thanks, Commander. Alright. So yeah, I do really enjoy the fact of like trying to get some dialogue with these people because um, a lot of the companions in this game, it actually takes a little while to like get them to open up more, but once they do, it actually makes this game a lot more fun because it, it makes you get ready for like Mass Effect 2 and 3 where you, or if, as you know now, it's um, you see a lot of these guys return, so it's like you get a better connection oh. with them. Hello, Shepard. Are you okay? I don't know. Your ship is amazing, and your crew's been really great to me, especially your chief engineer. But I just sort of feel out of place. The Normandy runs so smooth, it feels like we're not even moving, and the engines are so quiet. How do you sleep at night? The silence wakes you up? Back on the flotilla, the last thing you want to hear is silence. It means an engine's died or an air filter shut down. I guess you don't have to worry about that here. But old habits die hard. But it's more than just a silence. This ship feels so empty. It's like half the crew is missing. Back home, I couldn't wait to go on my pilgrimage. I couldn't wait to get away from the crowds. Now that I'm out here, I kind of miss them. Sometimes we don't appreciate what we have till it's gone. That's true. I'm starting to wonder if that's what the pilgrimage is really about. It's given me a whole new perspective on my people and our culture. You know, there's always a few who go on their pilgrimages and never return. I always assumed something bad happened to them. But maybe they just wanted a different life. You do plan to return to the migrant fleet, right? I could never abandon my people, Shepard. I will go back eventually. But we have to stop Saren first. Otherwise, I might not have a home to go back to. I should go. See you later. Right. Alright, so that basically ends all the discussion. So, um... 
next thing as I was saying we're gonna go to Pharaohs we're gonna go ahead and do the mission there um, I wanted to get those dialogues in I figure if you guys are watching these you guys want to see the perspective that I'm playing um, again uh, with this, I'm going to be running the character a certain way. That's just the way I wanted to tell the story for this. Um, as I was saying before, I probably won't be playing another Mass Effect 1 series. I could probably make a male character if I wanted to. I just don't know if I want to get around to doing it also. Where is that at? It's just the fact that I've played this game too much. And I just don't know if I'll do it or not. It's I'd have to consider it. On the other hand, it'd probably depend on the views I'm getting too. Um... As far as I'm concerned, I'll probably end up having to go back to EU4, because I don't know how many episodes I'm going to get out of this game, to be brutally honest. It's it's very hard to keep um, knowledge on that. Um, so, as I was saying before, uh, Ferris will be up here. Um, the next mission, so we can get to our Pinnacle Station, I said I might go there just to show it off. To get an idea about what's going on but I probably won't do anything else with it um, but we definitely are going to be doing something called asteroid x57 that is the fallen skies DLC um, it's not a big DLC but I want to get it done before I do Novaria because I want to make sure I can get those done um, mainly because it is a bit of a good DLC because it does have an impact into the later game because you will hear, I think in Mass Effect 2 you'll hear something about it, but you don't you don't know anything about it. So if you actually get it done, it actually does help you a little bit into um, Mass Effect 2 and 3. So what probably will end up happening is we will go to Pharos. I'll probably end up doing the landing here, but I probably will be back in like maybe 10 or 15 minutes. So I'll probably end up ending the recording here, and I'll just splice two videos together. Message coming in. Patching it through. Commander Shepard, it? my name Ooh, is Nasana uh. Dantius. I have a job for you. I can't say anymore in an unsecured communication. If you're interested in hearing my offer, meet me on the Citadel so we can talk in person. I'll be waiting in the Diplomat's Lounge on the Presidium. All right. Go ahead and land. I do have an idea for Mass Effect 2 uh, to play as well. I know there's a lot of side missions that need completed. Um, what I might end up doing is I might do those missions, but do them as separate uh, videos. And maybe just release a couple, like, instead of releasing just one a day, we release two a day. But I'll have to think about that once I get to Mass Effect 2, because that's not going to be for several months. <laughs> Around 2 to 3 is when... You guys may see content for that game start popping up. I don't know. Because I don't know how long Resident Evil 2 is going to be, and I don't know how much Resident Evil 2 I'm going to be playing. Because um, I really want to record and play that game when it comes out. I want an excuse to play it. I want an excuse to record it. I want an excuse to post it. I want everything with it. Um, but as I was saying, I am be back here in one moment i'll just get us near the door um i'll end the recording here i'll just have to remember to combine both episodes together so i'll be back for you guys i'll be back in like one moment so please give me one moment and i'll be right back all right hello i'm back okay so luckily you guys get to skip the entire process and don't have to watch a screen that just doesn't magically just doesn't record so we're going to continue off from where we left off atmosphere. it's actually been a little bit longer than i was planning to be Lord, away but um is hopefully we can start getting more of this done um i do have kind of a plan death. to stop here probably in next like i don't know maybe half hour i don't know when i'll eventually stop i haven't officially decided yet we saw your ship Fidan wants to speak with you immediately Who's Fidan? He's our leader. He needs your help to prepare for the Geth. They're making another push. Please, up the stairs past the freighter. Take cover! Oh god, take cover! It's annihilated. Uh, but I'm pretty much planning to try to play as much of this as I can in a short amount of time. I don't know how long I'll make the episodes. The only problem with the way I play this is 
I don't have an intro and I don't have an outro, so it's going to just go and then stop. Just like it does in, you know, in EU4, so... And I'm probably saying this, it's, I'm already probably going to be having the other episodes released, so it's... I just don't have the time to really edit, edit the videos. The only thing I can do is record it. I can edit the little tidbits out, the ones that need, like, fixed or replaced, but that's about it.